Hey, how y'all doing? Fat Guy Flies RC. I uh, got my microphone on, so hopefully you can hear me a little bit better. We're going to build the Arrows RC um, Twin 64 EDF. Hold on just a second. Let me make sure we are filming. Um, we are. See, I have to make a choice here as to whether I'm going to have the audio on or am I going to have the camera plugged into the TV where I can see what I'm doing. But often that happens and the audio doesn't pick up as well and you can't hear what I'm saying because I'll get involved in the build and I'm like, oh, I'll start talking like this. And you can. So, so I'm making sure it's filmed. So I will have to stop it. Uh, at one point when we're gluing on the, uh, the uh, rudders and we're gluing on the uh, elevators, I'll glue the sections on and then I'm going to stop with the glue dry and then we'll come back. So just let you know. Now, as we did in the unboxing, everything is already hooked up for you. Everything looks like it's already been centered. Um, of course, we will test everything. Biggest point of interest with this particular model and any model that you're going, when you're going to build it and you're going to be, you know, you've got these connectors here. Well, you know, this is going to be hooked up to your your rudder, right? Well, once it's glued, it's going to be sealed. So if you don't make sure that that rudder servo is working right from the get go, then uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna have a problem because you're gonna have to have a hard time because now the the plane piece is already glued in there. So now you're going to be like, uh oh, you know. So you don't want to have to. Uh, go through that process. So what I'm going to do is this rudder would normally go here, okay? And this has the little connectors that the hook in. I'm going to go ahead and hook this rudder up. I'm going to find, remember anytime you're hooking up servo leads, light to light, dark to dark, and uh, I'm going to find it in my jumble of wires. Okay, that's hooked up. I'm going to look for the rudder connection, which is right here. Okay. I already have my fancy um, servo checker. And, and I'm going to plug it in. So, because I want to make sure okay, that that rudder works. And I'm going to repeat the same process for everything else. So keep your eye on this rudder here. Let me find. Okay. All right. See, looky there. Let's see. I'm just making sure see see that rudder and all you're doing in this situation and also I can feel the rudder moving on the uh, nose gear okay so I know now and, and this is using a smart checker and all you do is you plug your smart checker into the battery okay and with a, with a battery, plug your servo lead in, and then just go to ser the servo test where you can see it for the 1500. And I'm going to repeat this exact same process for both elevators and the rudder. Okay, so let me pause there. I'll do that, and we'll come right back. All right, we're back. And I've tested all four control surfaces, both rudders, both elevators on the back of the F-15 and ensure that they all are working. But what I'm going to show you up close on the procedure of what I'm doing, hopefully you can see this, but you're going to plug your battery into your uh, smart checker. Okay. Let me unplug it and plug it back in. Okay. 
you're going to, you're going to, then you're going to come to this screen here. Okay. And you're going to go down to the servo tester where it says 1520. You're going to hit enter one time. All right. Now you're going to plug your servo lead into the side here where you see a USB thing and the, it shows on there negative positive. Your negative is towards the servo or the USB plug in or the black part of the wire, the black side of the wire, or in other words, the, the little connector of metal will be up. Okay, just plug it in. Okay, and now your control service, just for demonstration, is here. Now, what you're going to do, just tap it. See, look. I double tapped it, and that is making that uh, control service go all go back and forth its full range. Okay, and I just noticed that on this plane, on this elevator, it has mechanical hinges on the elevator. Then just hit hit it, tap it one time, takes it back to center. Okay, which is where you want it. But I have verified that it works on all the control surfaces for the tail, both rudders, both elevators. So I just wanted to show you that procedure. Hopefully it shows up on camera. So now we can proceed with putting this plane together. Now I'm going to move this uh, B26 because I want this plane stand here. Okay, figure out where I can set this down for just a minute. Okay. All right, you can go right there for now. All right, this is a Ernst ERNST plane stand. It's configurable in any way. I got it from BitGo Hobby. Great plane stand. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start with putting the control surfaces on for the tail. Now, remember I said this glues on. So... To that end, we're going to start with our elevators, okay? The ones I just showed you. Now, this has a very obvious glue area, okay? Let me put it like this. And has a very obvious glue area here, okay? When you look at a wire, hopefully you can see that. You're going to see on all servos, whether it's white, red, and black, or in this case, yellow, red, and brown, you always hook up your servos. The dark always connects the dark. The light always connects the light. Okay? Now, I'm going to be gluing glue to glue. Now, this is the same. This is just that cheap Chinese glue that comes with all your dynams, a lot of your free wing. It's still it's very similar to... Uh, Foam tack. It's still a rubber cement. You put a liberal amount on there, you touch it, let it sit for about 30 seconds or so, and then pull it apart till you get the strings, and then you then for maybe about a minute, and then you put it back together and you've got a nice firm, firm adhesion there. But on the, having said that, anytime you glue, glue to glue, anytime you do foam to foam, always score. The pieces anywhere where that is going to be connecting make sure you score the pieces okay i'm going to do a little test fit just to see how it's going to fit together and it's going to go just like that so the it's only this area here here and along here that it's going to connect so having that I'm going to go ahead and hook up my, you got them a uh, nice locking connection. Remember, light to light, dark to dark. It's obvious how this goes together. Okay, you got really, make sure it locks in. Because once you glue this piece in there, that's it. It's glued in there. Okay, and, and you're not going to be able to service your servo unless you... Go in there and cut everything out. Now, this is where it's going to get a little tricky because you've got that big servo connection piece. So you got to figure out how am I going to... Okay, very obvious. There's a 
pocket in there where that glues in and this glues went right in there on top of it so one thing to help since i don't i know this is elevator i'm going to cut that little elevator tag off of there because that's just something else that's basically in the way and i don't want glue getting connected to it i want glue to connect to the foam okay again oh i dropped my this is just that foam tack it's just that glue that comes with a lot of models i'll set all that in there I'm not going to be, this is holding my elevator on. So I'm certainly not going to be stingy with it. Okay. Okay. I'll put that piece of uh, the, the uh, wire connection, let it sit down there. It's stuck in there. I'll glue this piece here down. And if you do get glue, because you're going to get glue on your fingers, let it dry, and then just let it dry, and then it will kind of be careful with it. You know, see I've got it on that wing there. I'm going to separate it. See the strings in there? Okay. Now let the air get in there. Another thing you could use is hot glue if you want to. Okay. I want to glue that back down. All right, I want to hold that in place. Okay. And there, hanging down there, is a connection for the rudder, which will glue on top and it'll hold all these pieces in together. So it's not just, this isn't the only part. Okay. All right. Let's see how we. Yeah, she's getting good and tacky. Take it up again. Nice and stringy. All right, yeah, she, she's connecting there. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for a second. I'm going to put a little piece of we'll weight on there to hold it in. And we'll pause and come right back. All righty, I'm back. After the same process, I hooked up the one elevator I did all for control services, making sure that I put a liberal amount of glue, scored the services, a liberal amount of the uh, foam tack, well, foam tack type glue, let it sit on there, pull it apart, let it get nice and stringy, pull it apart for about 35, 45 seconds, then put it back and held it in place. And now she's pretty well in there. So... That's the only gluing, and you can see how nice those came out. And all, and you know, they're nice and even and straight because they, they fit together like pieces of a puzzle. There's no need for um, any measuring or anything. Everything is already there. Now you've got your. Now we're going to turn our attentions to the wings and everything else from this point on bolts on. Now you have one coming out of your side of your fuselage. One is labeled flap and one is labeled aileron, or one is labeled nothing. So flap is obviously flap. The other one obviously is aileron. So, and I am going to guess that they have the lead for the, yes, the lead for the uh, um, light on the end is wired into the, as, as on a Y into the flap servo. Okay, so make sure you grab the correct wing. All right, we're going to turn our wing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our wing spar. Um, a little tip if you're, if you're having a problem with your wing spar going through and it just seems super, super tight, you can get a little bit of uh, food grade silicone or spit or um, maybe a little bit of cooking oil, or it's just something that's non-caustic, and put a dab on there, and it'll get in there much easier. 
All right, this is the top of the plane, so obviously the top graphics is going to go in. Okay, you're going to need to fish out your connectors out of the wing itself. Okay, which is flap and air. And let me make sure I'm still filming. Yes, I am. <laughs> Changing how I do camera systems all the time is maddening. Like I said, okay, you got flap and one that's not. One's labeled flap and one that's not. So it's obvious how it goes. Okay, I'm going to take it, put that at an angle. Okay, I want to take my non flap. And remember, whenever you're hooking up servos, servo leads, light to light, dark to dark, regardless of the type of servo, whether it's white or yellow, your, your light is always going to go to light. The dark is always going to go to the dark. Okay? And you'll see that when you grab your servo lead. You'll see what I'm talking about. Light to light, dark to dark. Okay? Now, I'm going to fish that in there. Got a little pocket that everything fits in. Okay? So, actually, I think it's probably meant... Yes, it's meant to stay in the wing because you got more room in the wing for all these connections than you do anything else. Okay. All right. And look at that. That fits in there so, so very tight. All right, let's turn this around. Okay. Going to repeat. Same process over here, pulling my labeled flap and non-labeled aileron. I'm going to fit the wing onto my wing spar. I'm going to grab the one that's not labeled because that's my aileron. Light to light, dark to dark connection. Okay. And that should seat in there nice and snug for you. Light to light, dark to dark for the flap connection. You may even feel a small uh, pop in there. Whenever you connect those servos, they may pop in just a touch. That's fine. Okay. All that is meant to be fed into that wing pocket. Okay. Uh, it is a little fiddly. Don't let that bother you. Remember, anything that fits, that looks sleek and snug and, and uh, aerodynamic like that often means that it's going to be a tight fit on everything. And you, you want that. You truly do want that. Okay? And the reason you want that is because with a tight fitting plane you're going to have crisp maneuvers if everything fits together nice and tight it's more rigid less chance for vibration and what is the number one thing well one of the number one thing other than pilot air well the number one thing that kills rc planes and most anything mechanical is vibration so everything fits together nice and tight. Shouldn't have much vibration. All right. Now that's all nice and tight. We're going to turn her back over. Okay. And turn our attention to these screws. Like I said, you get five of the four that are needed, two millimeter hex head screws. And that is all that holds these wings on. Okay. Always support the wing underneath whenever you're screwing anything in like this on these models and you make them nice and tight but not over tight. Lots of time there's a plastic doubler like there are in here. And when you've got that, you screw in nice and tight. 
and it looks like the plastic bell was starting to kind of uh, dent in, stop. You've gone deep enough. But these have a very obvious stopping point. Okay, nice little tug. And that wing is on there. That wing is not coming off. All right, turn it around. Do the exact same thing on this side. Okay. I gotta tell you, the, the quality, it's not wanting to line up. You may have to actually get your body press on one side. There it goes. But the quality here is superb in this model. But Arrows RC puts out a quality product. Um, if you're looking in, this is not a beginner EDF, by the way. Absolutely not a beginner EDF. Good EDF, but not a beginner EDF. If you're looking for a good starter EDF, then I don't recommend this one. But the uh, Arrows Marlin is a great starter EDF, maybe with a safe receiver that has stealth leveling or something in there. Or the uh, F86 Sabre uh, with the vector system, which has uh, self leveling. It's a great starter. They're not uh, intimidating by any means, and they're just a good starter EDFs. This one, however, this is a big 6S bird, so not a beginner EDF. All right, something I want to do now is I want to get these gear out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my handy dandy servo tester. Hello, Fat Guy Flies RC. This is a continuation of the build video going into the radio setup. Now, if this, you notice, well, suddenly we jumped in the video to another part, and I was checking for to see if I get the gear to come down. Well, at that moment, my little remote mic died. I lost all audio, but luckily I was almost done with that part of the video, and basically the plane was together. Okay, so now I'm just going to jump, go from there, edit that part where you can't hear me talk, and go directly into the radio setup. Now, the manual calls out for the suggested battery is a 3300 6S with at least a 30C discharge. I think it's at least a 30 or 35C uh, discharge. Uh, 35C, but I've got a 30, I got a, I can use a 30C, it's not going to make that big of a difference, but I've got a 30, 40C in here right now with a 3300 uh, Liperior. And it's pretty much a, Unless you got a really small 4,000, a 3,300 or a 3,200 is about all that's going to fit. And that's about the only place you can put it is right there against the bulkhead. Because if you start shoving it, because in order to get this hatch to fit, you got to put your battery connection in there. And there's a bunch of wires back there, and I don't want to rip them out. What I did was I showed you in the unboxing and the build that big conglomeration of wires, and then in the unboxing, I showed you that wooden tray. Well, I took that wooden tray out, just screws out, and I ran five or six extensions up because I want the receiver up here in this part of the uh, plane. That's where I've got it. I've got it right here. And uh, that way I have a nice clean install just to, to show you. And uh, I ran up with an AR631, not an AR630. Uh, I was mistaken about what I had in stock, but that's what I used. I ran the antenna. I've already taken this outside. It runs the, past the range test with better than flying colors. The CG on this plane is 
125 to 135 millimeters back, which puts it right here on the top side of the wings. I've made some little black marks, and on the bottom side of the wings, um, you can see uh, the second on these decals, the one, two, in between the second and then the middle and the third little part of the uh, uh, decals here, those two sections there. Right there, put your finger right in the middle, and that is right in the middle of where the CG would be. Same thing, you can see them over here. So um, on your decals, one, two, three, and then in that little section there. And that's right where it puts the CG. So I put that right there, and she just seems to CG just fine. Right there. Yes, I know the canopy in the air is down. But she, there's really not too many places else you can put the battery. You can't really go back any further. And a 3300, pretty much, 32, 33, is about is what the plane calls out for. And that's where I put it. Now, I put an AR630. Um, I'm not really good about translating millimeters into percentages. Um, but the book calls out for your throws, I know I'm kind of jumping around here, um, for for high rate elevator 16 millimeter up and down and low rate 12 millimeter up and down and then this similar for alons and rudders so I will do three rates and I'm more than likely I'm going to do um, like a 60 um, with a 15% expo for my low rates uh, 75 with a 15% expo all the way around for my mid rates and probably a 90 with a 15% expo all the way around. I'll see how I like that. If that's too touchy, I can always dial that in or back, just depending. But I have an AR631. Now, it's important that once you've got your receiver where you want it and you've got good range, uh, you know, you know you've got good range, you've got good connectivity, and you're not worried about uh, signal, this is what I do. I get the basic setup, and then I'm have my receiver where I want it, then I take it outside, I count off 90 feet, set my plane down, walk back that 90 feet, I put the transmitter in range test and I make sure that I, she passes the range test. And if she does, then that's where I lock down my receiver. And that's where I've got her, right there. I did have to shave off, I got her on the side, did have to shave off a little bit of foam so that the hatch fits in, but it fits in nice and clean there. Now, like I said, I ran, I had six extensions, I ran them up to my receiver, and that make a nice, clean install. Uh, less like, if, if it's dirty, dirty, and you got a bunch of wires or everything, it's going to be a great chance you're just going to snag one, unhook one, you're not going to know it, next thing you know, you're wondering why you have this ball of $400 foam crashing to the ground. Um, so let's go ahead, and we're going to, I, whenever you put one of these smart receivers in that have AS3X and safe, you get them bound, and you first thing you do is you bind the aircraft up, and you make sure that all your control before you mess with AS3X, before you mess with safe, before you do anything, you make sure all of your control surfaces are working correctly. In this case, my right, my other ones are working right. My elevators were here. Let me get the plane to where you can see it. Okay. Okay. All right. The aileron, right aileron, left aileron, up elevator, down elevator, right rudder, left rudder, and I've already programmed my flaps. I don't have any elevator uh, mix in. But I got them on a two second deployment, flat position, everything. I'll figure that out at the field. Uh, if, if it needs a, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, that's the way I like to do it, is I'll see if it needs an elevator to flat mix at the field. But anyways, all the important point right now is before you go in there to do forward programming, is that you want to make sure all your control surfaces work in the correct direction. And everything is centered and everything is level and everything is in the right position. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And let's take a look at our elevators for just a moment. If you look, look at my elevators. Look at this one over here versus this one here. Okay, 
I'm going to need to go in there and manually trim that a little bit. Because see where that one's coming back and that one is down a little bit? I'll have to manually do that. And all I'm going to do is un 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 unhook the clevis and I'm going to rotate it in or out based upon which way I want that elevator to go. Now, in some of these planes, some of these jets, they want you to have a little bit of up elevator um, automatically, mechanically trimmed into it. And let me make sure that this doesn't say anything about it. I don't see anything about it. No, no, you're not going to do any mechanically. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mechanically adjust this one. So, all right. All right. It has a ball link hinge. I'm going to undo the ball link hinge and I'm going to screw. I'm going to make it go in a few turns until this elevator is level with the end of that piece of structure there. Okay. I don't have to, that's, um, that's what I'm going to do. I don't have to show that to you. It's just a matter of unhooking your ball link, screw it in a little bit until it connects level. That's all there is to that. And that way that's level. All right. But let's, more importantly, let's do our forward programming. Turn that beeping off real quick, okay? All right. What we're going to do now, I'm, I'm filming right now, Dad. Yeah. Okay, what we're going to do, that was my dad, by the way. <laughs> um, we're going to set up forward programming, okay? We already know that uh, everything is Oh, that's, I don't know what's still beeping, but okay. All right, we already know that everything is working right, correct? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into forward programming, okay? Now, maybe, got to think about it. All right, you're going to go to gyro settings. And this is the first time set up. It's a brand new receiver right out of the package. Okay. Make sure the model's been configured correctly, what we just talked about. All right. Make sure everything's in the right... Uh, uh, and we already, we already did that. We already know that. Make sure the model is level. Well, it's level. It's sitting on its... And you're going to hit continue. Okay. The model is now, now it's going to want me to set the model on its nose. Well, I have to, you just have to trust me. Okay, you got a nice cone, plastic cone there on the front of that thing. And I'm going to, that way the gyro learns which way is up and which way is down. And it also learns with that way it knows which way you have put the uh, how you configured how you installed your receiver. Okay. Uh, got so much debris on my. All right. Now see that already discovered where the. Um, it just says it's or orientation four. So you're going to go continue that way. Okay. Now, it says gain channel select. Now, I don't do this. You can. This is where if you want to put gains on a roller and make them adjustable or however, that's where you would do that here. But I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm just going to hit apply. And I'm going to go with the um, standard gyro settings, standard AS3X settings. Okay. Rebooting. You're going to hit click, go back to forward programming. Okay. So I think a minute, the more models you got, the longer it's going to take. Okay. So first time, save setup. Okay. We've already done that. We are, now we want to know what FM channel is going to be. And I'm going to put my, I put my safe stuff on, on B. Okay. So, I like mine on B. 
Okay. All right. The next. Well, we've done that, so we hit continue. Okay. We hit next. Okay, it may have to be turned on. Hit next. All right. Now we want, so for safe, it wants to say, okay, we're going to capture. It's sitting level. Okay, the roll is just a little bit off. If this was like a negative five or a negative six, then I would physically move the model a little bit to where it would capture closer to zero or negative one. But that's more than acceptable right there. Okay. Okay, so now it knows where the model sits. This pitch and roll are the limitations of safe, of how far it's going to let you go with safe. And then you're going to hit apply. Okay, you see it doing its little safe dance? All right. So now we know. Go back to forward programming again. All right. Well, that's fine and dandy. But here's what you have to do in order to get all this to work. Okay, you're going to go back to gyro settings. Okay, and you're going to go your F mode. Okay, and we're going to go with flight mode one, which is going to be where my safe is. Okay, and I'm going to go down here. And this is, this is going to be the B furthest away. This is what I prefer. And I'm going to make it active, self-leveling. Okay. Okay. And then flight mode two, which will be the next one, will be just AS3 will be active. And then my flight mode three, AS3 will also be active. Okay. So let's go back. And here's where we're going to go to AS3X settings. And this is what's important. Okay, in flight mode one, which is where I got it set to, see where it says fixed? Flight mode one, this is where safe is. You want to make them fixed, fixed, fixed. Flight mode two, which is going to be just AS3X, fixed, fixed, fixed. And flight mode three will be fixed, fixed, fixed. Okay. then back out of it again okay all right now why did I fix fit fixed for all three flight modes flight mode one is going to be my safe flight mode two is going to be just AS3X flight mode three is going to be just AS3X okay now the reason I have fixed Fix is because I'm not going to make that the limit the game limitations on the AS3X. I'm going to leave them set the factory set the way the gyros, you know, that the 6040. And I'm going to leave that set, I'm going to leave them alone. I'll be happy with how they are. Now, if you wanted to adjust them and you want you wanted the games to be less or more, then that's when you would make them adjustable and assign them that switch, that roller, or however way you want it in that flight mode. All right, but. And now, now this plane is basically a bind and fly that you just got from E Flight of Horizon. Okay, it's bind and fly. And like any bind and fly, and you've got her bound up first time, does AS3X work? No, it doesn't work until you do the throttle up at least 25%. Because, yes, I'm in safe right now. If I put up safe, as you can see, See that elevator? See those elevators going up? Okay. Look at that. Look at that aileron. Look at the ailerons. See how they're going up? And they're keeping their position. Okay. Elevator goes up. When I when I pitch down, so the elevator goes up to make it. And I pitch down. Okay. Now the elevator goes down to level it. Watch, watch my uh, maybe this will be easier. If you can even hear it, it's not real subtle, but it is enough to correct the plane. Watch that those ailerons. See those ailerons? How they're 
pitching up and keeping their position. That's how I know safe is working. But if I go to flight mode two, which is just AS3X, I don't hear them gyros. That's because you have got to remember, you got to turn your mo your uh, that was a gear, you got to turn your motor on. Get up over 25 percent. I'm in flight mode two. Here are the gyros. All right, and then watch that. Watch that aileron furthest away from me. You can see it, it slightly moves a little bit. Maybe you can't, but I can definitely see it. If you can't see it physically move again, and it should move against the direction that you're going. Though, so if I'm pulling this wing up, then that aileron should go up towards it to push it back down. Those ale those elevator elevators should go up as I push up as I turn that rudder towards me. That rudder, that rudder there should go against me because I'm turning it towards me. And I can see that's doing that. So I know my AS3X is working correctly and the directions are correctly. I know that SAFE is working correctly and then the directions is correctly. So the only thing I have left to do now is to probe in my rates and uh, fix that elevator. And other than that, and then put my aud but audio prompts and however way you want to do audio prompts, set your timer. I'll probably run it for three and a half minutes. Um, but I'll go over my uh, um, rates and uh, elevator to flat mix and um, audio prompts. I'll, I'll go over that at the, at the field. But um, basically, it's just a matter of, of fixing that elevator and setting my timer and flying her. You know, get my rates the way I want. But that's all I do at the field because you can set rates all day long by the manual. But however way you fly your plane, and how you, the weight of your batteries, and when you get the field, and your wet, how thick, thin your air is, how you know, just there's all kinds of variables that you just don't know until you get there. So that's something for the field. Well, anyways, that is the basic radio setup on how to program safe an AS3X with an AR631 in an Arrows RC EDF. And uh, like I said, all I want to do is fix that one right uh, elevator, make it go down nice and low. But other than that. And other than just the basic finishing up the radio with audio and setting the timer and you know other than that i'm she's ready to fly so y'all have a good one. don't forget to like and subscribe god bless y'all and don't forget faith family and friends them plates and uh now i gotta go apologize to my dad <laughs> i forgot to tell him that i was going to be filming this morning and he usually walks out this way and i'm like oh man sorry <laughs> bye yes my dad lives with me so does my mom and dad been blessed well enough to have a house big enough where I got my parents living with me and that way they don't have to be in some retirement home somewhere because I want them independent and I want them where I can see them and that's just me because I love my parents. Bye y'all. Been very blessed.